in addition to that, you just brought to the table, Jason, before we started uh, to record and go on live, uh, some rumblings that uh, Brett McMurphy's reporting concerning the Big 12 that's, of course, rather interesting. It's nothing new, nothing shocking, but finally putting some pieces in place, possibly for the 2023 season with the expansion of the Big 12 and the three teams that uh, have a little bit more difficulty moving on from their previous league, BYU obviously an independent, but with UCF, Houston, and Cincinnati and their uh, current contract with the American Conference looking more so now that they'll be able to break free and join the Big 12 in 2023. Yeah, it was really interesting, Mark. I mean, I think I think a lot of people thought that that probably wouldn't happen at least in 2024, maybe even 25, when when Oklahoma and Texas scheduled uh, departure w- would happen. But yeah, given the fact that they are negotiating a settlement, according to Brett McMurphy and others, uh, for for those three, in addition to BYU, to join the join the conference as early as next year. Um, it brings in a, an interesting conundrum for Oklahoma and Texas, right? So, what does that do? They, do they stay? Do they stay in the Big 12 and, you know, kind of enjoy a little bit of a different look of the Big 12 until 2025? Or, you know, does that maybe force their hand a little bit? I mean, Mark, I think it's a little crazy. I I, I seem to hear something different from both sides almost on a weekly basis, you know, just in terms of you you see some of these things. And I I think initially – you would think a lot of this would, would would lean towards Oklahoma and Texas going ahead. Okay, they're going to go ahead and make this move, and you know don't probably don't really want a ton of a, a part of this new what this new Big Twelve would look like. But at the same time, you know everything Oklahoma, I mean Texas especially, but you know Oklahoma is not you know particularly ready for the SEC just yet. I mean I think they're better equipped than Texas is right now, but you know I think they're. The, the thought process maybe as Oklahoma gets a little bit more um, kind of ingrained in, in uh, Venable's culture and, you know, gets, gets a couple of years in there and still plays around in the Big 12 with the easier path to the playoff and, and then goes in 2025. So this is going to be um, really interesting. And so I think, you know, with, with this happening, Mark, it, it sort of starts to, you know, maybe accelerate things a little bit for, for Oklahoma and Texas and maybe not necessarily that they weren't accelerated, but accelerated more publicly. Right. When, if this, you know, comes to fruition, because I think there was some, some information in there that stated that that settlement could be, could be um, completed, um, you know, within, a, within the next month or two. So, I mean, it, it almost lends you to believe if Oklahoma and Texas are going to make the move and go to, uh, actually go early to the to the SEC in 2023, you would think you would hear some sort of announcement summertime um, and maybe even a little bit earlier, but at least at, at some point this summer, whether or not that's something that, um, you know, that they're going to do early. So um, really interesting to look at, you know, some of the, um, you know, the the enticing opportunities for, you know, what that schedule would look like in the big 12 with, with um, Oklahoma and Texas, not to mention, you know, what we've talked about and what that looks like for them going to the sec, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how it, um, you know, how it unfolds. Like I said, there's, there's weeks where I think, yeah, I think I would say 60, 70% that Oklahoma and Texas are going to go to the sec next year. Then I hear some things where no, maybe they're not super, um, you know, there's 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 not an incredible rush to get um, to get over to the SEC immediately. So I, I think this brings a little bit of a um, a fork in the road, so to speak, and it'll be interesting to see what that what that looks like. I tend to like oddities in sports, whether they're statistical or otherwise. So I would love to see, and this has nothing to do with rooting for or against Oklahoma or Texas or any of the four schools entering the Big 12. It all has to do with just seeing something that we're otherwise not going to see. So if it's a clean break where Oklahoma and Texas leave the conference, go to the SEC at the same point in which the four schools join the Big 12, then we've got a new Big 12. That will be interesting, of course, for certain reasons. And of course, Texas and Oklahoma in the SEC will be interesting. But for one season... I would like to see for at least one season and I can't imagine it extending past that, but uh, 
I would like to see all 16 teams in the Big 12. I would like to see some of the crossover matchups that we're only going to get this opportunity unless there's some out-of-conference scheduling that's unforeseen. That we're going to see Oklahoma and Cincinnati play or UCF. Uh, of course, Oklahoma has played Houston in recent years, and that's uh, because of geography. That's been a matchup at times. Uh, but, uh, you know, BYU, Oklahoma, obviously played about 15 years ago as well. But just just some matchups that we won't see going forward because then all these schools are off to their respective conferences to stay. Yeah, it would be very extremely intriguing. I agree with you. I'm 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 a little I'm I'm kind of with you, Mark. And I know I know a lot of people, fans, and and things like that are just super excited for Oklahoma and Texas to hit the SEC, particularly Oklahoma fans. Um, but I think that would be very intriguing, whether it's a year or even two. To your point, um, on seeing some of the some of those matchups on on, on what they look like, um, you know, I think it would be interesting to see. Oh, I mean, even though OU and BYU played each other, they were. Um, um, I believe, I think when they play, oh yeah, yeah, that was in Dallas. So that was a neutral, neutral site game, but you know, any kind of a, um, home and home and, and things like that, if it happens for two years on some of those matchups will be, um, you know, would be very, very interesting to see. Cause I think, you know, one of the things that's, I think it, when, when you look at conference realignment, just in, in general, um, and I know this doesn't necessarily have to do with, you know, some of these teams coming in. But, you know, we had a discussion earlier this week about some of these, um, you know, with this, some of these typical non-conference, even even if they're conference rivalry games that that aren't going to happen, you know, anymore, like uh, UCF and USF, for example, you know, is that a game, you know, that's going to continue to happen? Oklahoma and Oklahoma State here, I mean, I think Oklahoma's talked about how much they still want to play and, and Oklahoma State's been a little bit, you know, less committal, you know, as far as that goes. But some of those, um, some of those rivalries, I know that the that college football has still flourished without some of those rivalries, like Oklahoma and Nebraska and Colorado and Nebraska and, and some others to, um, you know, Texas and Texas A and M and things like that. But it'll be, I think, one of the other interesting things. Just like I said, with all of the conference alignment, not specifically this, but in some of those matchups, what what do they look like? Do you do you stop seeing some of those rivalries that you that we've come become accustomed to seeing? 